Welcome back to Future Bank Today, a community dedicated to driving innovations in our financial institutions. I'm your host, Jim Kittredge. Today, we're going to talk about the first of what I believe are the true game changers over the next several years. When investigating future trends and breakthrough technologies that will significantly impact not only how banks will operate, but also what banks will do in the marketplace, the choices were numerous. We could list things like the continued proliferation of mobile devices, the ever-changing payments landscape, cloud-based computing. I could go on and on. Yet after all my research, there are two trends that will form the basis for what I believe are the most significant changes and impact to our landscape in the near future. Today we'll discuss the first of those significant technology trends, and that is machine learning. Let me start by asking a question. What are the biggest non-interest expense of a financial institution? You think it's provision for loan losses? No, that's about 5%. What about buildings and real estate? No, that's only 3 to 4%. Some people might even say it's technology. That averages out to be about 7%. The single largest expense for a bank is people. Specifically, the salaries and benefits of those people. As the complexity of our business model has increased, so is the total number of employees needed to support it. Think about it. Additional regulation has been imposed, so is the number of employees that have to be increased to support that. As banks continue to offer new and additional products and services, so too has there been a corresponding growth in employees to support that. Even in technology organizations, supposedly the bastion of driving efficiency in a financial institution, well, they've seen their base of employees continue to grow too. Although I have to confess, I've heard more than one CIO explain to me that they are actually shrinking the number of employees. I think if one looks a lot closer at the financial statements of the company, I think what you'll see in most cases, at least the cases I've had a chance to look at, is that maybe while employees are held flat or slightly down, what you see is a corresponding jump, a significant jump in most cases, an increase in the number of consultants and contractors or outsourcers to support the same workload. Don't be fooled. Approximately one-third of the total non-interest expense of a financial institution are people. And this number is growing. If you look over the last two decades, that number has not gone down. In fact, it has increased almost every year. Banks cannot remain competitive if their single largest expense keeps growing faster than their increase in revenue, in particular in the last several years. This reason alone is the primary driver behind the concept of machine learning. First, let's define what we mean by machine learning. Machine learning is a subset of a much broader topic. It's often referred to as artificial intelligence or sometimes referred to as thinking machines. Artificial intelligence or thinking machines were conceived as far back as Greek mythology, particularly with the story of Talos of Crete. Talos was a robot who circled the island three times a day protecting its inhabitants from outside invaders. The modern field of artificial intelligence was kicked off at Dartmouth College in 1956. By the mid-1960s, even DARPA, the government's Department of Defense investment arm, had jumped in with significant funding. Computers were soon capable of playing checkers, solving basic algebra problems, even beginning to speak English. It was heady times. It was predicted that within 20 years, machines would be capable of doing any work a man can do. Alas, this is the perfect example of the Gartner hype curve, and man was it a beauty. The researchers and programmers vastly underestimated what it would take to move AI beyond solving simple games such as checkers into being able to operate as a human being would. Before long, by around 1970, funding began to dry up as a result of all of the empty promises. The next decade became known as the AI winter. Talk about the trough of disillusion. But like most great innovations, the reality was a little different. True research and progress did continue. 
year in and year out. It was just minus all the hype associated with it. The hard problems were being solved. By the 1990s, narrow-focused AIs, and I'll explain what narrow-focused AI is in a minute, began to make its way into commercial applications. Some examples of those are logistics, data mining, even automobiles, with the advent of anti-lock braking systems. So how did we overcome those earlier impediments? Actually, it was quite simple. Researchers split what we called AI into two separate categories. One, artificial general intelligence, and two, pattern recognition and computational learning theory. I know it sounds like a lot, but here's the bottom line. Let's think of it this way. Artificial general intelligence, we'll refer to that as AGI, is a lot like HAL 9000 from 2001 Space Odyssey. You know, an all-knowing computer with knowledge and logic and insight as if it was a superhuman. Or, for a more recent example, you could think of the movie Her and the Operating System. They are both excellent examples of what we call AGI. Unfortunately, we are a long, long way from achieving this. It's not a matter of lacking raw compute power, but rather it's our lack of understanding of how neural processes truly work. The complexities of the human mind has become truly apparent. Ah, but the second branch of AI, that is pattern recognition and computational learning, has made significant strides. And as we will discuss, is now referred to, you got it, machine learning. Machine learning methods are also referred to as predictive analytics or predictive modeling. So how does machine learning differ from something such as data mining? Something which any good enterprise data team performs on a regular basis. Data mining is quite simply a set of tools that leverage specific algorithms pre-programmed to search a large data set looking for patterns and correlations. While it is a highly valuable tool, it is very narrowly focused on, specifically, what is present in the data already. Machine learning, on the other hand, is highly complex software that's deployed to a problem set or problem sets where designing and programming explicit algorithms is not even technically feasible. In addition, as it continues working on a given problem or data set, it continues to learn and produce better results as time goes on. A few examples where applications where machine learning is being used today are things such as spam filtering, search engines, even computer vision. Machine learning is predictive by its nature, and while it leverages large data sets, it differs from data mining as much as a horse-drawn buggy does to the space shuttle. Yes, they both can transport people, but to differing ends using different technologies. The bottom line is this. While data mining is an important tool set, it really is nothing but a small sliver of the overall concept of machine learning where its focus is looking backwards. It is looking at correlations and patterns in the data that already exists. This differs significantly from what we refer to as machine learning, where there is a forward-looking and a learning aspect that drives the software to provide more accurate and more comprehensive answers over time. So I can hear you thinking, so, Jim, that's a great history, but where are we now and why is this so important? Well, machine learning is being developed with natural language interfaces. Sometimes we know it as digital assistance, but at the end, it's still machine learning. Apple has Siri. IBM has Watson. Google has Google Now and something called DeepMind, an acquisition it did two years ago. And we'll touch on that in a little bit. Facebook has Facebook M and video AI. Amazon has Echo. And there are dozens and dozens of startups. 
all using narrow focused AI, leveraging machine learning. In the last two years, billions of dollars have poured into this space, and the progress has been simply astounding. Famously, Watson beats two Jeopardy champions and is now being leveraged in the medical field, combining genomics, research, analytics, best practices to provide the medical community with real-time patient-specific advisory services. Google, with DeepMind, is mastering machine learning by having it play 1980s Atari video games. Yeah, you might laugh, but consider this. It's mastered games such as Space Invaders after playing it over 500 times, and yet it did so without access to the underlying computer code or any instructions whatsoever. It was just watching pixels on a screen with one statement that says, maximize score. To watch it in real time is simply amazing. While the billions of dollars being invested by these large technology companies is important for our discussion, let's now move to specifically what's happening in the financial industry as it relates to machine learning. I'm going to talk about five examples of where machine learning merges directly into the finance industry today. First up is the majority of stock on all the exchanges is being traded using machine learning. There are no humans pushing buttons. Those are actually machines deciding when and how much to execute on a minute by minute, second by second, sub second by second across all the exchanges. This would include all of the high frequency traders and their myriad of programs that do nothing but leverage machine learning. Number two are robo-advisors. Robo-advisors is an important concept for us here because it is the beginning of the displacement, no pun intended, but the displacement of activities of a traditional banker. In recent months, Charles Schwab has rolled out what they refer to as the Schwab Intelligent Portfolios. What this does is this leverages machine learning and it helps individual clients and customers be able to place investments in terms of timing and location across any given portfolio. It is an extremely sophisticated piece of software that, as all machine learning, will continue to get better and better as time goes on. And it does this without human intervention. In fact, it is directly from the machine learning software to the client themselves. Truly a watershed moment for the banking industry. Looking a little further out on that same spectrum are small startup companies. I think a really good example of that is called Neokamai, N-E-O-K-A-M-I. They're out of Germany and they have just raised a significant sum of money for one single purpose and that's to build a machine learning experience, narrow focused AI, as a service. Imagine machine learning as a service. In addition, they are also focusing on specifically the price movements of a stock or the stock market itself. It's going to be fascinating to watch them as they continue to progress. Number three on our list is Barclays Bank in the UK. Barclays has recently announced that they are using machine learning or assistive AI to help customers with money transfers, in particularly international transfers. Once again, that is what a typical banker would help perform on a day in and day out basis. Number four is Watson. We come back to IBM's Watson has released what's called the Watson-based advisor for customer service and scaling wealth management. It is being used today by multiple banks internationally and is in pilot in at least one U.S.-based financial institution. 
And lastly, number five, it's been speculated that a handful of the leading edge banks in New York are leveraging Watson's machine learning to perform risk analysis across their portfolios. Because it's not publicly announced, I really don't have any further data that I could share here other than say that it's a safe bet to think that some of these financial institutions are leveraging this powerful technology in order to help them gain advantage in the marketplace. To summarize, we've seen that the single largest expense of any financial institution is people. And that expense has continued to grow over the last two decades. And clearly, financial institutions that can address that expense most directly and most quickly will have a significant advantage over those that are dependent on the continued growth of those people. Narrow focused AI or machine learning is what is going to help these financial institutions begin to rein in those costs. I am not saying that AI will completely eliminate the need for human beings. In fact, over the next several years, AI will act more as an assistant and less as a replacement. But I think quickly over time, it's not too much of a projection or a prediction to be able to say that more and more roles within a financial institution will be able to be accomplished by direct machine learning or narrow AI interfaces. Thank you for your time today.